Hi everybody, welcome to another video in Business Calculus section 9.3 Continuity Continuity A function f is continuous at a point if the limit exists when x goes to that point and the values of the function is defined and those two are equal so all three of this need to happen for the function to be continuous. And if the function is continuous on an open interval, it is continuous at every point in the interval. So the definition here is only uh, continuous at one point. We need three, all three of them. Right. Let's look at the, the first example. We have this graph and um, what is the limit? Of the function when x go to one, well, when x go to one, um, y values or the values of the function go to this point, which is y go to two, and what is the values of when x go to one? Well, x go to one, the function will be undefined, so there's none here. It's undefined. And is the function continuous at x equal to 1? That would be no. Right. To the next one. What is the limit of the function when x equal to 1? When x equal to 1 from the left hand side, it approached to this point. When x equal to 1 from the right hand side, it approached this point. They do not agree. So in this case, the limit does not exist. So we usually say the function is undefined, but for the limit, it does not exist. Or we just write DNA. Uh, the values of the function when x equal to 1, this actually defined at 2. And is the function continuous? The answer would be also no. Because it does not exist. All three of this need to happen for the function uh, to be continuous at that point. For this one, the limit uh, when x goes to 1 from the left side or from the right side, it approaches this point, uh, so it's, it's equal to 2. The values of the function is this dot, which is 1. And is the function continuous? It is still no because the values of the function is not equal to the limit of the function when x equal to that point. So still no. Uh, next one, when x equal to 1 from the left side and from the right side, it approaches to that point. The limit is equal to 1. The values of the function is also equal to 1 and they are equal. So in this case, it is continuous. Right, so there are different uh, scenarios, but uh, it needs to satisfy all three criteria for the function to be continuous. And I just want to bring one more uh, thing. Loosely speaking, a continuous function is the function uh, well, if we have to write, it will be in one stroke, like that. If there is the gap, it cannot be continuous. If there is a hole, it cannot be continuous because there is a kind of like a gap here. And uh, or we could, on the previous section, we can say that the asymptotes is not continuous as well. So, uh, if we can draw the whole graph in one, if we can draw the whole graph without picking up the pen or pencil, then it is continuous. If we have to, if we have to have a, an empty circle or the gap anywhere, uh, it is not continuous. One more thing, uh, all three of this is not continuous, right? Uh, but there are two different kinds. If this function 
if I just define a point, if I move the point here and make it the function to be defined like that, then it will be continuous. I can move this point here to there, the function will be continuous. On this one, I can not just move one point to make it continuous. So this case and this case is considered to be removable discontinuity it is removable because if we just remove one point or move one point from here to there or just define a point there it will be continuous we cannot do that here we cannot just move one point to make it continuous so this is these two are removable discontinuity this is or we call the drum uh, because they make a drum so let me write this down in this case it's going to be a drum this continuity or oh, there's a gap and these two are uh, removable this continuity right let's look at uh, this sample are the following function continuous at a given values of x? Well, so we have this. And uh, we just need to check three box limit at x equal to 2 of the function. This is the function. And we did say that for the limit, something that simple, we just put in the numbers, see what happened. So it is defined. So the first box is the limit. It says that to check uh, next the values of the function at 2. Well, this we're just going to substitute 2 into it. And that check. And then are they equal? And that check as well because both of them are seven uh, so it satisfies all three criteria so we say the function is continuous at x equal to two right and go to the next example Look at the limit as x equal to 2. Right, so first if we put 2 into it, we have 0 over 0. And uh, we said 0 over 0 is indeterminate, right? But we can factor uh, x minus 2 because it is equal to 0 when x, when we substitute 2 into it, that means x minus 2 must be a factor of the function. Right? Both of them equal to 0, meaning both of them have the factor of x minus the limit, x minus 2. And it's, we need x squared, so we need going to hit an x, and we need negative 4, so we need a plus 2. Because minus 2 times negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. Right, cancel this out. We just have x plus 2 and now we simply do 2 in for x. And so the limit does exist equal to 4. Now the values of the function Just going to put two in. And 
and this is divided by zero. Doesn't matter what it is. Uh, the limit is in the indeterminate form, but in the term of function, it is undefined. Because the values of the function here, it's just one point. Uh, the limit can be in indeterminate form. But the function, the values of the function, it's just undefined when we divide by zero. Oh, answer the question. Uh, is that continuous? The answer is going to be no. So I should say it, uh, not continuous. So not continuous at x equal to 2. Right. Uh, similarly, on this one, at x equal to 0, substituting is undefined at x equal to uh, 0. So we just say it's not continuous because of it's undefined. So if it's undefined, it cannot be continuous. Right? Now, here we have a piecewise function. Uh, is that continuous at x equal to 1? Well, first, let's check the limits. And then the values of the, the function, are they equal? Just, just checking the boxes. Since this is a piecewise function, we have to look at uh, the one standard limit. Right? So look at the left handed limit. From the left side, the left side, that means. It is less than one, right? So we're going to choose this part of the function. By the way, as you see, this problem is kind of long, so we should write very small. Then put one in there. We have two times one minus three minus negative one, and then the limit. As x go to 1 from the plus sign, meaning on the right hand side, so it will be greater than, and we use that piece of the function. Right, so we're just going to substitute 1 square plus 1 is 2. Now the limits are not the same. so this fail and so it's not continuous the limit does not exist the function is not continuous right on to this one uh, just checking the boxes first what happened when the limit when x equal to 2 So when x equal to 2 from the left hand side, from left hand side is less than 2, and less than 2, we're going to use this function. And 6 minus 2 is 4. Now we check the limit when it go to 2 on the right hand side. On the right hand side, it's going to be greater than 2. So we're going to choose the 2 to the x. 
So 2 to the second power is 4. And that equal. So we check that box and we say uh, the values, the limit of the function when x equal to 2 of a function is equal to 4. Right, so that's the first box that we need to check. Next, the values of the function. So, in this case, for the piecewise function, we have to see where the equal sign is. And that, we're going to substitute 2 into it, and that will be 4. So we check that box, and the value is equal to 4. And then uh, the last box, the limit, if x equal to 2. equal to the values of the function equal to x equal to 2 and both of them equal to 4 so yes so we check three all three of the criteria criteria uh, so we say the function is continuous at x equal to 2 Next, uh, we have continuous properties, general continuous properties. If two functions are continuous on the same interval, then the sum the different product and the quotient are continuous on the same interval, except when we divide. Uh, we cannot divide by zero. So that's uh, not really important. The important thing here is this part here. Continuity of some common functions. The polynomial function, rational function, exponential function, logarithmic function are continuous whenever they are defined. So why is that important? Well, earlier we say that it is continuous. We have to check all three of the criteria. This theorem says that for this kind of function, we only need to check one box. That is, is the function is defined. So this theorem essentially saying that for this type of function, we only need to check one thing, is the function defined? If it is, it is continuous at that point. So, uh, once again, polynomial, uh, rational function, exponential function, and logarithmic function. So now, spell it out. Uh, con constant function, polynomial function, polynomial function is something like a quadratic or to something like that is a polynomial function. Exponential function is something like a constant raised to the x power like we have earlier. It is continuous whenever it is defined. Right? Those functions continuous everywhere because it is defined everywhere. So those three functions continuous everywhere. A rational function. Rational function is when we have something divided by something. That's where the denominator, except when denominator, don't forget this, except here. So it is continuous everywhere except when it is equal to zero. And if we have an odd root, it is continuous everywhere because it is defined everywhere. Uh, this should be defined. There's a typo here. And for an even uh, root, uh, we cannot have a negative inside it because square root of a negative number is imaginary. So bottom line is we have two rules here. The first one, if it is an even root, Everything inside have to be greater than or equal to zero. So that is rule number one. 
the rule number two is for the function to be defined, the denominator cannot equal to zero. If the denominator equal to zero, the function is undefined. Therefore, it's not continuous. So if we have something at the bottom, it cannot equal to zero, and regardless what happened on the top. And we say, what happened if we have zero over zero? Well, zero over zero is still undefined. Uh, unless we talk about limit, the limit when we have zero over zero, that is indeterminate. But in terms of function, divide by zero is undefined, therefore not continuous. Right. Next look at uh, this. Determine where each function is continuous. Right. So uh, we have a polynomial function here, x squared minus 5x plus 3. Uh, doesn't matter what x is, substituting for x, we have the values of the function. And because it is defined everywhere, it is continuous everywhere, because this is that class, that type of function. But, uh, once again, polynomial, rational function, exponential, and logarithmic function. And then if you ask what is not on that list, I mean, I should ask what is not on that list. Well, the piecewise function is not on that list, meaning that if we have a piecewise function, we have to check all three criteria. All the function like polynomial here is defined everywhere, therefore continuous everywhere. So I will say polynomial Is, continue, uh, is defined everywhere so it is def uh, continuous everywhere because this is one of the function in the theorem Next, we have a rational function here. Remember, we cannot divide by zero, so we say denominator not equal to zero, otherwise it is undefined. So if x minus two and x plus one not equal to zero, Right, it is defined everywhere except when x, uh, when denominator equal to zero. So we find the values where the function uh, is defined here. Uh, so in that case, I would say x minus two is not equal to zero. X plus one not equal to zero. So if x equal to two, I mean not equal to two, and x not equal to negative one. So if we draw a number line, and then uh, there's negative one, and there's two, those values will make the denominator equal to zero. Everything else, so every other values is fine. So either here we have an empty circle or we can put parentheses. I'm just going to say it. We can use an empty circle here. And we write in interval negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 2, and then from 2 to infinity. So this is where the function is continuous. Uh, we can say all, or we just use the little union simple this means all right so the function is continuous on this interval intervals right now let's look at the next two 
from uh, this one we have a cube root and this one we have an, a square root a cube root it doesn't matter what inside the cube root so if it is defined it is continuous uh, so in this case we have the out root and inside is defined x minus 2 a polynomial is defined and continuous everywhere uh, so this is continuous everywhere because x minus 2 is defined the whole thing is defined so it is continuous we have square root of 2x minus 1 this is a uh, square root now two things we need to watch out for we cannot divide by 0 so the denominator is not equal to 0 to make it define oh, this is the answer by the way and now the second rule we need to watch out for is where we have an even root Everything inside have to be greater than or equal to zero. So we have two x minus one greater than or equal to zero. Move to one over and divide by two. So x is uh, greater than or equal to one half. Now, if we draw the number line. And there's one half. It's going to be greater than. So it is on the right hand side of one half. And uh, including the one half because we have the equal sign. So we, that would be a big dot. And we write one half to infinity. And um, we including the one half, so we use the bracket. So if we don't including the point, uh, it's an empty circle, and we use the parentheses. If we include the point, we use the dot and the bracket. We cannot go. We will never including infinity because we will never get there. Infinity is a concept. It's not really a number, right? So once again, equal sign, a dot, a bracket not equal an empty circle of parentheses right uh, the next part is uh, solving inequalities so solving inequality uh, so why do we put this in this section well we see if the function is continuous well we need the function to be continuous in, in order to do this and if it is continuous and it is not equal to zero then it is either positive or negative Right, so to, to say, what's the big deal? There's three options if it is defined and continuous, right? If it is not equal to zero and it is greater than or less than zero, right? Why is that such a big deal? Well, think about it this way we have the whole interval a and b. If in a and b there is no where it is equal to zero, so if we have something like this. Then we have some zero values here, right? Uh, consider corner axis, right? If so, if there is a zero, uh, it's not going to work. However, if we have something like this, none of the values in between, I'm oh, sorry, if it go like this, when we go from A to B, there's no point, it is equal to zero. In that case, it can be either positive or negative. So that think about it this way. If there's a line of x equal to 0, where that is where uh, not x, uh, where the values equal to 0, if you do not cross the line, if you do not touch the line, and it is continuous, 
it can be only either up below or above it. It cannot cross. If you don't cross it and you don't touch it, it can only stay on one side. That's what this theorem is about. So once again, if it cannot be equal to zero for every point in the middle, meaning that it does not cross and it does not touch the line, in that case you have to stay on one side above or below greater than zero or less than zero. Right, now uh, in terms of solving uh, inequality, uh, remember uh, it could be potentially be undefined as well. So they are uh, not zero positive and negative, not, not only the, those three uh, we consider the, the case when it's undefined as well. So there are four scenarios. Uh, we take care of equal to zero first and then undefined. Once we take care of those two, it can only be positive or negative. And that is the point. We find where the function is equal to zero, where the function is undefined, and then um, we test them. Because we think that interval, where it does not touch, when it does not cross, it only can stay on one side. Just keep that in mind. All right, and then we just test for each interval, and then we can write the solution. So these are the steps. I should look at the first example here. We have that function, right? So I would say, uh, of course, for this one, uh, f of x. is x squared minus 1 over x minus 3. All right. So first we need to solve for when it is equal to 0, when it is undefined. After that, we can test uh, this, uh, each interval. All right. Now, first, f of x equal to 0. And then f of x undefined. Here we have a rational function. It is equal to zero if the top is zero. Because pretty much we just want to solve for that. And um, so x squared minus one equal to zero. Add one on both sides. And check the square root on both sides. Remember, when we take the square root on both sides, don't forget that plus and minus. Plus or minus, so just plus or minus 1. So we have two values here. Next, where the function is undefined. Uh, we have a rational function. It is undefined where the bottom equal to 0. So in this case, uh, x minus 3 equal to 0, so x equal to 3. So we find the values where the function is undefined and where the function is equal to 0. Uh, next, the sign chart. Uh, we will draw a sign chart here. And the sign chart. We have one line represent the number line. So I'm going to put x here and then f of x. Um, so we have two values to, uh, when x equal to 0. So we're going to have negative 1 and 1 and then 3 right so it's just line a number line but we're going to put all of those numbers that makes the function equal to 0 or undefined all right now we know that uh, it is equal to 0 when x equal to negative 1 or 1 so we do here we do have 0 and 0 and at 3 it is undefined Right, so that what the values x and that corresponding the function at those x values. 
Right. Now just um, here we make a chart. And then we're going to test each interval. Uh, to test each interval, uh, we're just going to pick a point between the interval. So here I can choose negative 2. Uh, between negative 1 and 1, that will be um, 0. doesn't have to be 0. 0 0.5 or anything. I will do you know, 2 and 4. Right. Let's put those values uh, into the function and test them. It's pretty easy. Just put a neg uh, put the numbers in here, find the values. I have a calculator, so I'm just going to use it. Sorry. Right. Uh, y equal to x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 3. Right, I will just go to the table because those are nice values. Right, it's only 5 at 3, alright. But at negative 2, it is negative. Uh, 0.6 I'm just going to say it's negative at negative 2 uh, 0 it is 0 0.3333 so it's positive at 2 is negative and at 4 is positive so that's all we need uh, positive or negative we don't really need the values right and um, the rest it's just the answer or the solution and then for that, we just go back to the problem and see what do we need to look for, right? So remember, we show for less than zero, meaning that we look for whenever it has the negative sign. So it has a negative sign in here, and it has the negative sign in here, right? Because which one less than zero, and that where it's less than zero, not equal to, so there will be an empty circle at 0, at uh, negative 1 and 1. So the answer for this problem, when the negative is, is negative infinity to negative 1, but not including, because we don't want the equal sign. And then 1, 2, 3. So that is the answer. Right? So there, once again, four scenario equal to 0, do not exist. One will take care of those two. Only have positive or negative less left to consider do one test point and that allow us to see uh, to solve the inequality right now we have this uh, let's just write the function is uh, the right hand sign here By the way, if we have something like uh, remember, we only compare to zero, so we have to subtract three on this side and make it equal to zero, and we have to do the common denominator. multiply x minus 1, x minus 1, top and bottom, and combine all of that into one big fraction, x plus 2 minus 3x plus 3, so we're going to solve for that. So remember, this only works if the right hand side is, is 0, so we have to move everything to the left hand side when we see something like this. This one is already in the form, so we don't need to do that. Uh, we still need to do two things. Where the function is defined, uh, when the function is equal to zero, if there's a fraction, a rational function, that means the top is equal to zero. And subtract two on the other side. We have negative 2. Next, uh, where the function is undefined. We have a rational function, so that's where the bottom is um, 
equal to zero. Right. And then we say, how do we solve that? Well, we can take the square root on both sides just now we did earlier. But when we do that, remember, there's always plus or minus. Uh, plus or minus zero is still zero, so that's why it's, uh, it doesn't matter. And then plus one on both sides, we have x equal to one. That will do the sign chart. So for x and f of x. Right, there are the values of negative two and one. When it is equal to negative two, um, it is equal to zero. So I'm going to put zero at negative two, and at one, it is undefined. Right. So if we're online, so we might have like a table or a chart. Right. Now test point. Uh, test point. We're just going to pick something in the middle here. Um, I choose the whole number, so it's easy to work with. Right, so those are the numbers. Let's put in the, the function. So x plus 2 divided by x minus 1 square. Just go to a table at negative 3 is going to be negative at negative 1 or at 0 is positive and at 2 is positive right so what we're looking for well go back to the problem what we're looking for is greater than or equal to zero, meaning we look for the positive and the zero, right? So where is this equal to positive? It will be here and here, right? So we're supposed to choose positive, greater than or equal to zero to choose positive and zero. So we choose the positive and then zero. Remember, we can choose zero, so we can choose this point. We cannot choose that point. The function is undefined. So that is our answer. So we say we can have zero, but we cannot have one. And then from one to infinity. Yeah, just put the uh, union. So that is the answer. Right. So uh, so for where the function is equal to zero and where the function is undefined, once we took care of that. Uh, it only have two possibilities left, positive or negative. A sign chart like this will tell us if it is positive or negative. Be careful when there is the equal sign. Of. We can only choose the values where the function is equal to zero and not where it's undefined. Right. Next one. So not always we have um, rational inequality. We may have just polynomial like this. So here we said uh, where the function equal to zero, uh, we don't have the top or the bottom. So that's pretty much it. Oh, by the way, uh, let's write the function. Right. 
right? So where is equal to zero? Uh, that is the whole function. So x plus one, x minus two, square equal to zero. So for it, uh, each factor can be zero. Subtract one on both sides, x equal to negative one. And here we take the square root of x minus two equal to plus or minus square root of zero, which is still zero. So if x minus two equal to zero and plus two on the other side, x equal to two. So we have negative one and two where the function is equal to zero. So where is undefined? Is undefined. Remember, this is a polynomial function. If we multiply them out, it's just polynomial. So I would say there's none because it is defined everywhere. Yeah, so we just have those two uh, points on the sign chart. Yeah, and undefined is none. Look at the sign chart. Then X, then F of X. And there's only two numbers, uh, negative one and two. And both of them will make the function equal to zero. And let's choose the test point negative two, uh, zero, and three. Right. Uh, the function x plus one. We don't have to use a calculator, we just do this by hand. X minus 2 square Right? Go to the table. Negative 2 is negative uh, 0 is 4, which is positive, and 3 is 4 is also positive. No, 2 for 0 is 4 and 2 is 4. Yeah, both of them are positive. Right, and then we check. What do we want? Greater than or equal to 0, meaning we're going to choose positive. We're going to choose zero, so we're going to choose zero and zero. So the answer for this is just from negative one all the way to infinity. Right. So very simple, right? Uh, five ways is undefined. Where it is equal to zero, put everything on the sign chart and clearly label where it is equal to zero, where it's undefined, and then the rest is easy. Just uh, test point and sign chart choose a point in between the intervals and then test them, put in the function to see if it is positive or negative. Right. One last thing I want to uh, say about this type of problem. Uh, and then you say, why here the sign alternating negative, positive, negative, positive, and why the signs do not here? Why the sign do not here? Now if you pay attention, that uh, what we have here is the square. So, uh, in algebra, it says if we have an even multiplicity, so if when we have an even power on the factor like this, uh, the graph will touch the x-axis and turn around. 
because of that the sign will not change it hit the zero yes but it will not change the sign after that so we see here there's a, a square if this is to the fourth power it's still the same and even power will behave the same if it's even power at one when it cross one it will not change the sign that's why both of them are plus the two here because of the square it will not cross it will not change the sign when we go past two right because of that all we need to do is just do one of them and then we say this to the first power x plus two to the first power so when we go drum over it the sign will change if it is an odd power or an odd multiplicity or an odd power on the factor the sign will change if it is even the sign will not change so that's in the big picture of things of course same thing here uh, the negative one this power of one so the sign will change and uh, at two is positive uh, is even so the sign will not change and with that uh, we finish section 9.3 see you in another video in business calculus as always thank you for watching